I'm Jennifer Marie Keller, welcome to my Diary of a Painter. Last weekend I was able to drive down to San Diego and check out the Bouguereau show that was happening at the San Diego Museum of Art. They have about 40 of his paintings ranging from genre to portraits and street paintings to devotional and some other subjects. Walking through this exhibit just reminds me how well Bouguereau can really put light in his paintings. He's just has a really great handling over value and color to make his paintings so luminous. And it's almost like walking around the gallery, it's like the, the gallery is lit by his paintings rather than the gallery be, being lit by the light bulbs up above. And it's also the way that he lights his figures. They're so, the, the shadows are so luminous. And I don't know if this is true, but I think I remember reading this or hearing this from someone that Bouguereau, his studio was kind of like a greenhouse. So the the walls and the ceiling were made of glass. And so then when he would be painting his, you know, placing his models there, that there's so much light bouncing around then that the shadows would get really, really bright and light. And so that's what gives uh, the, the shadows and the skin such a luminous effect. I also really like how Bouguereau paints his fabrics. In his fabrics, you can definitely see more of his breaststrokes. He's not hiding them so much in these areas. So you'll see more free breaststrokes being put down and also the temperature differences. So you can see a breaststroke of a, a cooler temperature right next to a breaststroke of a warmer temperature. And it's definitely much more obvious in these areas and then also too in the backgrounds so like the the grass grassy plants or stonework he shows the brushwork more and different effects that he's working with paint so um you'll see some scraping effects or uh, where the paint is really built up or in, or on other areas where you can almost see that like first and premature so you're seeing like the, the canvas with that first wash over it. So that's always cool in those areas to see the variety of how he's using paint, which is contrasted with how he paints his skin, which is almost all the times super, super smooth. And he's definitely more subtle with how he's laying things down and the brushstrokes are usually not obvious there. And you, you can definitely still see that he's working with temperatures where there's a lot of cools and warm temperature shifts next to each other. It's just a lot more subtly done so you can't see it as well. Another thing Bouguereau is really good at, I think that what he's known for too, is how he paints hands and feet. The way he paints hands and especially fingers, they're so, they're so fleshy and almost like slightly chubby in a way that you can really see the workings of the fingers. He does such a good job. I feel like sometimes he's like showing off too with how he poses the hands in very complicated, ornate type of poses. And they don't look complicated or anything when you're looking at the painting, but then if you just, cause he, he does a really good job with posing them. So they look effortless. But when you're looking at the painting and how like the, the models will be holding their hands in certain interesting ways. I just think like, wow, that must have been challenging, <laughs> challenging to get that all to figure out with making it look really good. But like, yeah, he is a master at painting hands and feet for sure. So going through the show, I did the thing that I normally do where I first go through, shoot, I first go through the show pretty quickly where I look at everything. And then I go through it again and I go through it much more slowly where I'm stopping only at the specific paintings that really strike me. And I really stare at just a few paintings for a really long time just to like drink them in and just get to be sitting in front of them and studying them. And then I go and get lunch. And that's when I write in a journal about all the things that are affecting me about the show, what I think about the paintings in them and just trying to figure out how I want them to influence my work or not influence my work type of thing. And I always really enjoy doing this um, and just getting my thoughts down on paper about the show. And then I usually go back in and look through the show again, but I look through 
just just a few paintings that I really want to sit in front of and study again. And I got to say, when I was writing in my journal about the show, if things got pretty pretty dark, actually, <laughs> about what I was thinking about the paintings. And I mean, I have to say, Maguro is definitely a master. He is a master at handling paint and he knows what he's doing. But I, I do like to be really nitpicky with the, well, with everything, but with the masters too and comparing them against each other to see what I can pull out of their work that I like, that I want to influence my own work. So some things that I don't quite prefer with Bouguereau paintings is that there is such a lack of mystery in his paintings and I really like certain paintings where I'm standing in front of them and I get this really exhilarating, curious, mysterious feeling and I definitely don't get that with Bouguereau. I feel like technique wise everything is just so obviously there right in front of you. So for example, and this is with technique wise, for example like he shows where anything starts and ends it's so clear so where the skin starts and then where the skin ends and the, the fabric starts you see that like a clear definition all the way through from it being in the light to the shadow also where the the skin and the hair starts or the body to the background you see everything there's no like ambiguity of line or anything <laughs> like that and it's almost as if there's an outline effect to everything, but almost. I mean, he's not hes not doing that. He's not outlining things, but you, you're just always seeing the start and stop of everything where it almost gives that outline effect. And I gotta say, I really prefer those, those paintings that have that mysterious quality where it's like, it's like the world of the painting is full of such thick atmosphere where things get lost in the shadows and things get lost in the light and you don't quite know where everything starts and stops and not to have that everywhere in the painting where it would just be like this weird blurry foggy mess but just where it's got a bit more focus where maybe you can see where things stop and start that's more in the focal point but then as things get more in the periphery it would fade away and you wouldn't need to see all of those that the the borders of everything, like absolutely everything in the composition of the painting. And that's talking about technique wise with how he's painting, but then also image wise as well. I like paintings where there's a lot of ambiguity to the image, whether that be um, like with the storytelling of the image. So whether that be like the little literal storytelling that's happening in the image or maybe a facial expression that's not quite so cut and dry, this is what the person is thinking. I feel like with Bouguereau paintings, I feel like it's like he's holding my hand for the storytelling in, in every single painting where it's very straightforward, very clear idea what you're supposed to be getting out of the painting. And so I feel like if I were to come back and look at his paintings in years from now, where I've really changed and grown as a person, I feel like I wouldn't get any more or anything different out of it because the, the storytelling just seems so straightforward. And I really do prefer that ambiguity in work where the painting feels like it can change with me or I can get different things out of it. So those are definitely the big points that I have written down in, in here. And that's something that is definitely really important to me with my own painting and what I get really excited about with other people's painting too, is that sense of mystery with literally how it's painted, and then also the mystery with storytelling. And of course, this is all obviously personal preference. I think Bouguereau is a really great, a really great painter. He knows how to paint and make a really good, great painting, especially the light in his paintings is so, <laughs> so beautiful. But I gotta say, when I look at his paintings, I don't get quite as excited over them as I do other painters. But if you're in the area by San Diego, I definitely recommend going to see the show. If I was closer to San Diego, I would definitely go again. The ticket price is, I think it's about $15. And I think it's really cool to see 
40 of his paintings all together. I definitely like that for these more um, solo show of painters where they have so many paintings over their lifetime where you can everything then that, that you're thinking about that that painter and how they make paintings gets to be a little more obvious where you can see all of those paintings together so that's always really cool to see and it's also in the the san diego museum of art is in balboa park which i think is probably my favorite park that i've ever been to it's really really beautiful okay that's all i got on the bougaro show i am jennifer marie keller please subscribe to this channel i've also got all my other social media links down below and you can sign up for my monthly newsletter by going to my website at jennifermariecolor.com, scrolling down on that first page, and you'll see where you can put in your information.